<laughs> okay. And go. Hello, everyone. My name is Dmitry Kovartovich. I'll be giving uh, a talk about zero knowledge hash functions, but unfortunately, I'm unable to attend lightning talks today, so I'll give a very short announcement in the very beginning to draw someone's attention. So you may have heard that uh, last year some really fancy verifiable delay functions were suggested based on RSA, and they are planned to be used in Ethereum. And this is actually a very uh, important part of new Ethereum designs. And the Ethereum Foundation encourages analysis of new assumptions that were used to build these verifiable delay functions. Well, if you want to write a good paper, if you want to analyze some assumptions, if you want to just bring up new ideas, they all will be rewarded. Just go to the website rsa.cache. Okay, now for the talk. So uh, this is a joint work with my authors uh, Arnav, Lorenzo, Christian, Marcus, uh, Sebastian, uh, from uh, many parts of the world, uh, University of Bristol, Graz University, and myself uh, from uh, Ethereum and Dust Network. So this is about how we build hash functions that uh, allow uh, very fast uh, set inclusion proofs, but not only set inclusions proof, also uh, other stuff. Okay, so why do we need uh, different hash functions for zero knowledge? So first, uh, a bit of an example how uh, private cryptocurrencies work. So how uh, do cryptocurrencies work where we are uh, gonna hide uh, how much we spend and who are the senders, who are the recipients. So it basically starts with someone signing a transaction which uh, has some um, secret inside and this uh, secret is hashed. Uh, suppose that uh, secret is K and uh, there is some metadata there and uh, the result, the signature plus hash, is added to some uh, Merkle tree. Merkle tree is to make possible future proofs. So that you add the Merkle uh, transaction to the Merkle tree publicly, but then you are able to spend it privately. How do, how do you spend it privately? Basically, you prove uh, that after it has been added to the Merkle tree, you prove that you know there is a leaf in a tree for which you know is secret, but you don't disclose which leaf it is and what the secret is. And to prove that, you have to provide a Merkle path in the tree, but you have to provide it in zero knowledge. And this path consists of, sub, of invocations of several hash function calls, and well, as heavy the hash function is for zero knowledge, as expensive are uh, proofs. So no matter which kind of zero knowledge system you use, Pinocchio, Sonic, Plonk, Stark, Bulletproofs, these guys can be very expensive. And if you use uh, hash functions which are not really suited uh, for uh, such proofs, you will have the effect of uh, what Zcash had in the very beginning where such proofs took like 40 something minutes uh, to be constructed because of Shutter 56. So traditional functions that we have been building for years are not so suitable for uh, SNARKs, uh, this, this, the zero knowledge proving systems, or Starks, or other. Why exactly? Because such proofs are constructed such that uh, we express the proof uh, verification algorithm as a circuit, and this circuit is not uh, over, uh, over 32 bits or 64 bits, which are natural for our computers and over which such hash functions have been designed, but these are usually uh, different uh, objects, different, uh, they are prime fields or binary fields. And uh, um, the thing is, so uh, after you, uh, if you take a regular hash functions and you transform it so that it can be uh, expressed over a prime or binary field, it becomes much more expensive in terms of the number of gates or uh, the number or the, deg uh, the degree of polynomial, if you encode it with polynomial or something like that. So um, the proof generation time is one of the most important uh, metrics uh, which, we are, which we are gonna use, and this effect of 45 seconds for Zcash proof, this uh, was because uh, SHA-256, when it was put into uh, prime fields, it was very, very expensive. It contained, uh, the circuit is very large, contains a lot of gates. And we basically want to minimize that. We want uh, to uh, make uh, the resulting proofs much faster. Well, not 
uh, of course, exponential, uh, not exponentially faster, but faster by a very large uh, constant. Um, so what kind, what kind of hash functions we need? We need a hash function that operates in a big prime or a binary field, depending on, so that it can be used in different fields. Maybe it should be a family of hash functions. And it should be very good on certain metrics like uh, circuit size or uh, degree size product. And of course, it should be secure. So it should be collision resistant, should be pre-image resistant. The thing is, we haven't been designing such hash functions for years because we are so much concentrated on the performance on the x86 architecture. Uh, there have been some suggestions. For example, there was an idea to use uh, so-called Pedersen commitments uh, for hashing, where you basically have a couple of elliptic curve points, and if, you wanna, if you're going to hash to uh, inputs, then you interpret them in as integers, multiply one point by one uh, number, second point by the second number, uh, take of some x coordinate of the result, but the result in hash, even though it uh, can be proven secure to collisions uh, as long as discrete logarithm is hard. Uh, on this elliptic curve, it has still many problems. There are homomorphism properties. There are pre-mesh resistance, uh, not ideal, length extensions in the current form, and so on. So these guys are not really great for the purpose of uh, zero-node-friendly hash functions. And uh, one of the first designs uh, several years ago appeared uh, which was a candidate for uh, better zero knowledge friendly hash functions, was called MIMC. And MIMC operates very, very simply. It's one of the simplest designs you can imagine. It's basically, suppose you have a field, and you have a key, you have input X, and then you only XOR, you add a key uh, to the input, then you put it to the power of three, then you add, again, a key plus some constant, constant difference every time, uh, then you uh, put to the power of three again, and so on, and you repeat this 100, 200 rounds, or something like that, until the degree is high enough. So basically, uh, uh, it uh, works very nice, and uh, uh, properties are good, but it's a bit non-trivial to generalize to a wider state. So currently it takes uh, just one input of a field, and to make it a compression function is uh, somewhat non-trivial. So, and we, our designs are called uh, Poseidon and Starcut, uh, two names because one is for prime fields, uh, the second for binary fields, but uh, the zero knowledge space, zero knowledge research evolved so quickly that when we designed it a year ago, uh, there were promising uh, zero knowledge proof systems which operate in binary fields, but now they are uh, not popular anymore. So most of the zero knowledge proof systems nowadays operate in prime fields. That's why Poseidon is uh, more important, and I will talk mainly about it. So um, we decided to start with the mode of operation, and uh, the sponge mode of operation is uh, one of the uh, first most popular and uh, simplest one. And it operates very simply. So you suppose you have uh, a secure permutation F. Permutation, I mean not that it permutes inputs, but it's a bijective transformation. And, uh, you, we work in field elements, meaning that uh, the rate and capacity R and C are not bits anymore, but they are field elements. And we count an integer number of field elements, two, three, four, five, not that many, because fields are quite big. So for example, if you have a 256-bit field or a bit smaller, then the capacity is just one field element. Um, and uh, the idea is that if you were gonna uh, hash uh, a long message, you you split it into parts, and you add it uh, repeatedly. You, you add chunks uh, into, uh, into the internal state, not touching the capacity part. Well, there are, the advantage of this approach is that uh, there is no key schedule. You can put the key into the input. Uh, the analysis is simpler, and uh, we know how to design good uh, permutations. At least we know it for uh, the binary uh, case, for the bit case. Uh, let's see how we can make it for uh, prime fields. For prime fields, we uh, outline the following, maybe a bit sophisticated approach, but still it works very nice. So it's still substitution permutation. So S boxes, uh, linear transformations. S boxes, linear transformations. So you are all uh, familiar with uh, uh, this approach because it's very traditional, symmetric crypto. In AES, you have the same. In uh, SHA-3, you have the same, uh, more or less. And uh, 
basically here, what we do, the only non-trivial thing is that our rounds are not identical. Uh, we have um, S boxes applied to each element of the field in the beginning and in the end, but in the middle, we don't need um, S box on every element. We take only one S box. And why we do that? It's a very important design decision because apparently um, most uh, powerful attacks are algebraic attacks, and we want to protect from them. We increase want uh, to increase the degree of a polynomial that uh, uh, the polynomial, if we express the output of the permutation as a function of inputs, they basically want that the degree of all these output wires is very high. And apparently, if you drop S boxes from here, the degree remains more or less the same. And uh, by dropping these S boxes, we can save, up, uh, save on a number of constraints and our uh, circuit becomes much uh, smaller. So uh, what are S boxes? S boxes are like in MIMC, they can be, uh, they are power functions. So they can be X cube, but well, X cube is not a bijection over uh, prime fields which are given to us because of elliptic curves we're working in. Uh, so usually X to the five. Uh, you can also use the inverse, but inverse uh, has a, a subtle issue with when you design a constraint, you have to put an extra constraint uh, for zero. It, it might be not that convenient. And apparently, uh, there are attacks on this construction which works a bit better for the inverse. That's why we don't use inverse. We, uh, mainly recommend x to the five or x to the seven, or exceptionally in some MNT curves, uh, we have to use x to the, x to the 11. Um, so yeah, the motivation why we use uh, one S box, I already told. So apparently, uh, our uh, luggage of cryptanalysis we have accumulated over the recent years is mostly inapplicable. So all these differential and linear attacks, they stop working after just a few rounds because these boxes are very big. But the thing is, uh, now the most powerful attacks are algebraic attacks, attacks which are interpolation attacks or Grobner basis attacks or higher order differential attacks. So they become much more powerful. They work on uh, a longer, uh, on a bigger number of rounds. And uh, what is more important, we are not very good at estimating their complexity. In particular, the Grobner basis attacks uh, we still kind of revising, and the algorithms that are the most effective for Grobner basis attacks, they are, uh, well, their complexity estimates are not uh, very precise. That's why the number of rounds we, we put in here, they're based on some pessimistic estimate, optimistic est estimates of how these algorithms work, but of course they can be revisions. So what else interesting to say here is that um, we have designed that up, and most of that analysis that we have uh, conducted, it applies both to the prime and binary case. But apart from that, we have to provide really many parameters because uh, the functions, they can be used in a very different number of contexts and there can be different proof systems. And actually, if you switch a curve, you also have to uh, switch a hash function because the underlying field is different, then the constants are different, and maybe the number of rounds are different. But apparently, it's all, uh, works out, so we support a really big number of modes. We support Merkle, Merkle trees explicitly of different theorities. We support variable length hashing, constant length hashing. Uh, we support even uh, authenticated encryption, and of course, if you put uh, authenticated encryption into a SNARK, you get some kind of verifiable encryption. Uh, so this can be also used for verifiable encryption in context of uh, uh, zero-knowledge proofs. Many implementations available. Uh, third-party ones mainly. So what else? Yeah, I've told you already that Poseidon is for prime fields, which are now most popular. Starcut is if you ever have to work with a binary field, uh, you take Starcut. It's a bit different because some attacks start working for binary fields and the design is uh, just a bit different. Um, yes, so sometimes there are questions how to use sponges and Merkle trees and uh, basically, uh, we have already outlined it in the paper, but just uh, for uh, completeness, it works as follows. So basically you run, uh, your, uh, you apply a permutation to the input where one, in one the capacity element is fixed and there are some uh, message inputs and you basically take just one output element 
and you take it from uh, all the branches, if it's like three to one tree, you take one element here and they become elements, uh, input elements to the next uh, sponge call and it goes further. The only thing is that you have to be really careful here because uh, you want to have domain separation between uh, Merkle trees and regular hashing and maybe you also have to take care that some, uh, some leaves can be void leaves and that's why we have uh, played with the capacity element just a bit uh, to uh, have domain separation right there. Well, apparently when you work with uh, zero knowledge proof systems, it becomes uh, not so easy. We cannot put many elements together in one element because we, we cannot like, for example, put nonce and part of the key into one field elements because uh, when we prove that uh, we know the key, it becomes uh, non-trivial to separate one from another. It puts additional constraints, which is just not convenient. So apparently we have to allocate extra elements for uh, different uh, parts of inputs. So for zero knowledge, we are adapting it constantly for uh, zero knowledge proof systems, which appear and appear and appear. And last year there have been, I know, like 10 new systems have been suggested. And uh, well, there are very technical things how we make uh, it possible in SNARKs. So in SNARKs we uh, create uh, constraints and for these constraints we compute some uh, linear combinations of elements which result through because of matrix multiplication and eventually we uh, have as many constraints and there are S boxes, relations through S boxes. So, uh, how can it count? For example, we can com uh, compare it explicitly with a Pedersen hash and if you, for example, have a Merkle tree of a billion of elements and this is quite natural if you work with a big number uh, with uh, big sets like a set of transactions or a set of uh, people or certificates, whatever, then a billion is very natural and then uh, if you, uh, depending on which uh, tree arity you use, uh, you can go down to 4,000 uh, constraints in the SNARK metric, whereas, for example, Pedersen hash, they uh, would need uh, 40,000, so like 10 times more. This effectively means that our hash functions will be 10 times faster than uh, Pedersen hash for uh, Merkle tree applications. So that was for, uh, for SNARKs, uh, for regular SNARKs like Spinoka Grow 16. Uh, these are for, or for bulletproof, some numbers. That's actually very interesting. So when we submitted a paper to uh, this conference, uh, bulletproofs were still uh, a popular design and we calculated numbers uh, saying that we can uh, make proofs verifiable in, within one second and bulletproofs is a very interesting proof system because it uh, doesn't need a trusted setup but uh, they are now, I think, going a bit out of fashion, so new uh, proof systems like uh, Plonk, uh, they are uh, taking their place. So we have, uh, you see that uh, we can, uh, we, we have different instances of hash functions for different curves, and that's why those are the different numbers. Of course, for uh, 381 uh, uh, prime fields, the proofs are uh, taken longer to create and verify uh, by a small factor. So we uh, can adapt our system to uh, many uh, proof systems, or adapt our hash functions to many proof systems that have just appeared. Like for example, Plonk, uh, we can modify the Plonk itself to make it uh, suitable for our hash function and we can get like uh, uh, 25 or something increase in performance because we can make polynomials much smaller and we don't need uh, uh, wire layout uh, as sophisticated as it is uh, for generic Plonk. So we can, uh, with our hash function, you can have much uh, faster uh, snark proofs. So there is also a very interesting system appeared recently called Redshift. It's interesting because it's uh, both post-quantum and trustless because it uh, doesn't use a trusted, it does use trusted setup built entirely on uh, Reed Solomon uh, commitments and uh, using some stark ideas. So the disadvantage of uh, Redshift is that the proofs are very big, well, quite big. So for benchmark, for frequently benchmarked 
uh, circuits of one million gates, the proofs are one megabytes, but we can make our hash function smaller. Even for Merkle trees, we, um, I made some estimate, and if we still uh, uh, want um, Merkle proofs for sets of one billion elements, then uh, we, can have we can have proofs as small as 20, uh, 12 or 15 kilobytes. And this is post-quantum, and this is uh, trustless. So I think it's, it's, really, it's really funny, so, and it should be, should be really fast. So we don't have, uh, we haven't programmed for Redshift yet, but I think it's a very uh, promising uh, technique. So yeah, there are some ideas how you can uh, do it for Starks, how you can express uh, uh, Algebraic relations between S boxes. I think I will skip that. The one last important thing I would like to cover this very recent. So some uh, uh, people have asked us to uh, create um, uh, our, an encryption mode, and it turns out that uh, if we combine, uh, if we, uh, if the shared key is created with some sort of uh, Diffie-Hellman elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman then we can combine uh, Diffie-Hellman with uh, some authenticate encryption mode like SponchRef uh, and put our uh, hash function, our, our permutation inside. And effectively, we can have a very uh, fast and compact design. So basically, the idea is that if um, a recipient has a key on the elliptic curve, uh, which is built on the scalar field where the uh, proof system operates, so basically there are two curves. So one curve is uh, on which, uh, w which is used uh, by a proof system, and another curve, it's called an embedded curve, uh, on which uh, people have keys. And then basically the idea is quite simple. So first uh, user create a shared uh, key point using uh, Diffie-Hellman on this curve, and then you use this, you put this key point as input into the uh, sponge wrap right here, so where this K, basically this is the, all this input is here, so nonce, the key and the length of a message are just inserted into the sponge, and then after one call, you can use it as a key stream, and yeah, after one last message call, you output, after one last message absorption, you output uh, a tag. So, yeah. And uh, these this guys uh, can be put into a snark circuit, and if, if the curve is embedded, then, uh, and you, can, then you use a standard machinery for uh, Diffie-Hellman circuit, and this all works uh, with rather um, good set of constraints, like, I don't know, you can, like, uh, several hundreds per, per call, all this including uh, Diffie-Hellman step. So there are several projects that already use uh, our design. Uh, Sovereign uses for uh, revocation checks. Dust Network uses for proof of stakes, you know, the private proof of stakes. There are also two other guys where I've seen that they're using, but I don't know the details, Loopring and Coda. Uh, yeah, feel free to, to join. And we have a number of uh, instruments to uh, help you select uh, uh, good hash function, so there is a website, poseidon-hash.info, uh, which uh, will grow and will have more directions how to use the hash function properly. There are the parameter generator, it's like almost finished, I haven't finished it uh, right by the, by the talk, but I will add the link into the poseidon-hash.info. Uh, so when you can input your curve, you can uh, the, the output you need, the security level, and that will tell you the number of rounds, uh, the constants, the matrices, and everything, maybe even uh, test vectors and some links uh, to sample code, which you could use. Yeah, thank you for your attention. Any quick questions? I have, I have a couple. So in your uh, sponge construction, um, on your picture, you had two complete levels at the front and two complete levels at the back, which made four. Oh, yeah, 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 da, 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 da. Where was it? This one. There, yes. So you said rounds with full S-box layer and rounds with full S-box layer. Yeah. That seemed, so you have two and two, but in one slide you seem to say eight. Is it really two and two, or are they just like 
simplified? Oh, uh, this is simplified. Okay, all right, fine. And the other question is, can you use this in like picnic, type, picnic signature type constructions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Feel okay. free to use. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but is, is, is it any better than picnic? Uh, I'm not that good at this uh, okay. signature thing, but yeah. <laughs> uh, what can you say about the construction of A? So are there more details that are shared, or is it just a huge thing? Sorry? The construction of the A matrix. Ah, uh, well, it's just, uh, I would call it a Cauchy matrix, basically. Just an MDS, and you, uh, every element is one over number, of index of row minus index of column, something like this. Yeah, standard MDS, you can use any MDS here. It's One last question. Yeah. Um, uh, could, if you could go back to your benchmark slides, um, you, you had the, uh, uh, the, the one for comparisons to rescue and uh, Pedersen hashes. Uh, yeah, but not with... Uh, yeah, this one. Yeah. Um, so, uh, could I ask what the, um, uh, what Pedersen hash you benchmarked there? Or, um, Henry, could you take a photo? Can we, um, can sorry, we, can I, we, we quit? Yeah, uh, the question is, um, what, what, uh, what implementation of Pedersen hashes did you use, and what did you benchmark? I, I didn't benchmark, I just took this number from... Uh, uh, from the Zikish spec. Okay, thank you. Okay, let's thank the speaker and everyone from session again. <laughs> and before you all go, we have some important information. Um, uh, after the next session will be the lightning talk session. Now, anyone who has not turned up at Real World Crypto before will have no idea what we're going to do, so please listen. So what we're going to do is for the lightning talk session, you will queue up here at the end of the last session of the next session and then you will be called onto the stage to give a depending on how long the queue is a talk with no slides you have no slides you just have to speak and i will cut you off depending on the length of the queue so more people in the queue the less time you have less people in the queue the more time you have so if you want to game the system get all of your friends um, in the queue to start with, and then it's very long, and I'll make sure everyone has a very small amount of time, then you get them all to leave, and then you at the very end can have the entire time if you want. So that's, you can game the system, it's adversarial, uh, but that's how we're going to do it. But you will queue from this side of the stage by these steps, please. Thank you. <laughs>